Now we actually give some details about how requirements were extracted from the use cases, or rather I should say from the use case templates. All 51 templates were gone through in a particular the same process and with slight variations because it was done by several people and the people used different approaches. It was you was applied to each use case. So basically, we identify some categories such as data sources, lifecycle management, transformation, capability, data usage, security, and privacy. And those categories were a way we gathered the requirements together. Then we identified ahead of time which of the fields in the template might be likely to drive these particular global categories. And so which of the global categories are more motivated by the reference architecture diagram. Um, we have slightly different terminology from the reference architecture diagram, and those transformation is still used in the, in the reference architecture because the, these were these uh, words here for the overall um, category where we're going to put things in um, was developed before the reference architecture was finalized. So we divide Pacific requirements, categorized uh, as it's described into these various high level um, buckets. And then we took the Pacific requirements, uh, which come from particular use cases, and aggregated them into general requirements. I would say that's the least certain part of what we did, because really to do that, you need to actually know what the reference architecture needs. And we didn't have time to, to, to do that. So I would say that part, step two, is likely to get redone at some stage. So we had 437 requirements, uh, which we extracted um, <coughs> from the 51 use cases. And as I say, this is hardly an exact science because um, one person's you know, in a given requirement can be written as one requirement or three requirements, depending on its granularity. And the types of requirements which you can get are software needs R, software needs MATLAB or Hadoop and so on. Um, <coughs> you need to be able to update the data every 15 minutes or the analysis of the data every 15 minutes. Need to transfer the data from the accelerator from Japan to the computer in the US and so on. Uh, here we have need a lot of provenance. Real time and batch mode both needed. So these are typical requirements uh, which we identified. So this all seems trivial, but uh, when you take 51 uh, use cases, 51 times trivial time adds up to a sizable amount of time. And so although it looks very easy, it turned out to uh, be quite difficult in detail. And we need to try to automate some of these processes that might require redesigning the, the template so it's more clearly mappable into the reference architecture. But to, before we do that, I think we should actually um, check the reference architecture to see it's uh, stated in the most precise fashion. All of this is up on this website here. Uh, if you go to that use cases website on the NIST, uh, NIST you will find uh, the template which we discussed in detail. Uh, we'll have a readable summary with these, um, which every use case has, a, has the application described, the current approach described, and the uh, futures given. And there's also sometimes a picture. Um, then there is uh, Digest, which is what I actually um, showed you a, a subset of, which has the three Vs, volume, velocity, variety, software, and data analytics, the five, these five key characteristics. Then we have for each use case a set of specific requirements. And due to the way it was done, these were sometimes tied to the use case very clearly or sometimes just stated without the, the tie being explicit. And then we had a link between Pacific requirements and general requirements. So here is um, uh, some comments on the uh, general requirements. So we found 35 
general comments, which are organized into seven categories. Uh, so, uh, for instance, um, here are some transformation general comments, and um, 38 specific requirements are summarized as a general requirement. Need to support diversified compute intensive energy processing machine learning techniques. Here we have seven specific requirements, and by specific, I mean they come from different use cases. They may not be stated in the same way for each use case, but they were mapped into the same general requirement. Need to support batch and real time energy processing. So, and here we have need to support processing of large diversified data content and modeling. 15 specific requirements are mapped to that general requirement. Need to support data and motions. This is the streaming thing. Six use cases at that. So those are how the 35 general requirements were. Well, these are four of the 35 uh, as an example. Just as an example of um, this process is non-trivial in size. We have, um, if you look at the actual report, I don't know that NIST has decided whether to put this report in as a document or as a, with all 264 pages or as a summary as part of it and then some of the rest like the actual, this includes all the temp filled in templates, but the rest just on the website. We have the 35 general requirements, the uh, 437 specific requirements, which are what averages to 8.6 uh, um, Specific requirements by use case and 12.5 specific requirements by general requirement. Data sources, um, we have three general data sources requirements and 78 specific. Transformation, um, uh, we have four general and 60 specific. Capability or infrastructure, we have six general, 133 specific. Data consumer, six general, 55 Pacific. Security and privacy, two general, 45 Pacific. Life cycle, nine general, 43 Pacific. And other, which is a sort of bucket for things we didn't know what to do with, five general, 23 Pacific. And I explained how we put them in these categories in, in an earlier slide, and how different fields of the use case template naturally mapped into these different uh, red categories here. But it was all done by a person, not automated, so the person could make a decision to violate the general the, the, the rule. But uh, if you're gonna do this at any greater volume than 51, you're gonna need to find some automatic way of doing this. So here are some important uh, web resources. This is the one I've already given the use case to our website. Um, here's the specific requirements for each use case. The general requirements versus architecture component. General component uh, versus architecture component with the record of the use cases giving that requirement. And the architecture component is the requirements plus the use case constraining this component. So these various um, websites give you the detail, the rich detail which you can use to make, um, get some understanding as to how these different use cases uh, fit together. They drive the reference architecture, and, to, and so to what extent are the key challenges are needed. So here's a little comment on the next steps. Well, we're, uh, this is the next steps for this particular use case and requirements uh, subgroup. We've more or less agreed on the current draft material. Um, and we've actually got the feedback from most of the submitters. This evaluation of the requirements I think will be done in version two, not in version one. Because until we get a more thorough understanding of the reference architecture from specific examples, I don't think this makes sense. And it will take us a long time, of course, many months to do a good job on the uh, mapping use cases to reference architecture and looking at the pluses and minuses of that. If we want to collect more use cases, which is not clear at present, because given we haven't fully processed or run out of the current use cases, it's not clear we need more. 
we need to automate that if we want to do more with some sort of web resource. So that's where we are. Next step, publication of what we have and do this mapping between use cases and architecture. Next step for this class is study of the 51 use cases.